Not surprisingly, shooting Stranger Things is no easy task. With so many characters and such crazy storylines, villains, and battles, it should come as a shock to no one that some scenes in particular were extremely difficult to shoot. So stay tuned and don't go away, because we're revealing why one Stranger Things Season 4 scene took over two years to create. Plus, if Stranger Things ends with a sacrificial character, there's only one choice. First up, did one Stranger Things scene take years to create? You're about to find out. Believe it or not, the Stranger Things VFX team worked on one particular scene for over two years. The scene in question features the Creel House and the Upside Down. Season 3 of Stranger Things was released back in July of 2019, and it was three years before Millie Bobby Brown's Eleven and her crew returned to Hawkins to deal with the Upside Down. As part of Stranger Things' last season, fans got to see the Upside Down in more detail. After Vecna is introduced as the main villain, the series delves deeper into the world where Vecna resides. This gives us a closer look at some of the elements such as the Creel House and one particular shot of the manor required extra post-production work. Thanks to the COVID pandemic, the VFX team had more time to make the scene come to life, and the end result is something really spectacular. Filming of Season 4 actually began before the pandemic, but when it stopped, the VFX team continued to work. VFX supervisor Julian Harry said that the first time fans see the manor and the Upside Down, when one of Vecna's bat demon flies over it, is the scene in question that he and his team worked on for several months. For those of you who don't know, the Creel House appears in the season both in the present in Hawkins and in the Upside Down. Fans could see several interior and exterior shots of the manor, including a bird's eye view of Vecna's lair surrounded by red hues. Next up, how did Julian Harry's VFX team bring the Creel House to life? Let's take a look. According to Julian Harry, a lot of work went into bringing the Creel House to life. In fact, the specific sequence we just looked at took more than two years, Harry explained. We actually started to develop a few looks and started to work on the assets before the pandemic, and when it stopped, we kept working on one or two shots. Harry and his VFX crew were also forced to change the animation several times in order to get the right amount of nightmarish effects. However, to complicate matters further, the manor still had to look like a replica of the one in Hawkins. It was a tremendous amount of work to transform the scenery into a decomposing wasteland, with vines spreading all over the place in the upside down. Harry said, There was plenty of time, so we took like such a long time to develop that shot, so it was pretty cool. The latest season of Stranger Things was so popular that it became the most watched English language series on Netflix. Within three days of its release, season four had been viewed for a jaw-dropping 286 million hours. Two weeks later, that number had risen to an astounding 781 million hours. The series earned the second spot on Netflix's coveted list of most popular TV series after Squid Game. Up next, if Stranger Things ends with a sacrificial character, who should that be? For some fans, there's only one choice. Fans are speculating over how Stranger Things will end, but if a character must be sacrificed, many Many fans are hoping that it will be Will Byers. After a tumultuous season 4, fans have to wait for at least two years before the final season hits Netflix. The ominous ending of the fourth season and the two-year window before its next installment gave fans a ton of time to theorize how the series will reach its conclusion. Fans think it will end with an Eddie Munson-style sacrifice to save the others, but still, how the series ends remains anyone's guess. However, as we all know, Stranger Things is not in the habit of killing its darling characters. The Duffer Brothers have said that season 5 won't won't introduce anyone new, which means that any major death in Season 5 will involve a character that fans already know. Some are worried the final season might spell trouble for Steve Harrington or Eleven, but if Stranger Things does end with an ultimate sacrifice, fans are hoping that the character will be Will Byers. If a character has to die, who do you want it to be? We'd love to know your thoughts, so drop a comment down below. Stay tuned and don't go away, because we're about to reveal shows that you need to watch if you love Stranger Things. Next up, have you ever heard of Castle Rock? Let's take a look. If someone built a Stephen King theme, Theme park, it would surely look like Castle Rock, which is also a hot series on Hulu. If you love Stranger Things, you need to watch Castle Rock. The series offers a treasure trove of King references for fans. Season 1 focuses on a mysterious inmate at Shawshank, and Season 2 introduces a young Annie Wilkes. The fictional main town first appeared in the Dead Zone and served as the setting for needful things. If you haven't seen it yet, do yourself a favor and add it to your binge list. Another show worth checking out is Archive 81. The series centers around an archivist named Dan, who is hired to restore old videotapes and becomes obsessed with the work of a woman named Melody, who is in the midst of investigating a demonic cult in a lower Manhattan apartment building. The series has a knack for creating a sense of dread and tension, which is what you want for this type of genre. Unfortunately, the series was cancelled after a single season, but it's worth giving it a shot. The Haunting of Hill House is another series you'll want to check out if you love Stranger Things. It's a ghost story that centers on five adult siblings, haunted by paranormal experiences that cause them to flee the family mansion years before 
Labor. Their series is directed by Mike Flanagan, the brilliant yet creepy mind behind Dr. Sleep. Up next, are you looking for one of the creepiest shows around? If so, check out Hannibal. The Hannibal series is set years before The Silence of the Lambs and follows FBI Special Agent Will Graham as he tries to track down Hannibal Lecter without losing his own sanity in the process. Brian Fuller's blood-soaked show is gorgeously cinematic, with plenty of tension, haunting visuals, and an ambient score that immerses you. Film star Mads Mikkelsen plays the flesh-eating doctor whose sophisticated nature masks his true diabolical interior. The supporting cast includes stars Gillian Anderson and Lawrence Fishburne. Moving on now to another series that should be on your radar, American Horror Story. The anthology series American Horror Story consists of 10 standalone seasons and has an amazing cast. It's a fun series for horror fans, and the thrills and chills just keep on coming. Also, if you happen to like American Horror Story, check out the sorority slasher Scream Queens, which stars Emma Roberts as a mean girl that's really easy to hate, and 80s Scream Queen Jamie Lee Curtis plays the school dean. Moving on now to one of the creepiest shows around, Bates Motel. Bates Motel is set before Psycho when Norma Bates is young and comes to an Oregon town with his mother to fix up a dilapidated motel. Despite their best efforts to start a new life, Norman struggles to maintain his mental health. Unlike some of the shows we've just witnessed, Bates Motel got five seasons to build to a satisfying conclusion. Finally, are you ready for some 1950s-style horror? Check out Lovecraft Country. Fans of Stranger Things absolutely adore Lovecraft Country. The series centers on Atticus Freeman, who travels across America in the 1950s in search of his father, and the horrors awaiting this young black man reach beyond Jim Crow into Lovecraft's twisted imagination. Beautifully crafted and daringly subversive, Lovecraft Country blends the real American horrors of racism with Lovecraftian cults and monsters. Be sure to add this one to your binge list, folks. It's seriously addictive. Moving on now to The Outsider. This show is really creepy. After the mutilated corpse of a young boy is discovered in the woods of a small town in Oklahoma, detectives attempt to track down the culprit. Like so many awesome shows, The Outsider is based on a Stephen King novel. However, it doesn't feel like one. This series feels like something entirely different. It comes off as a bit of a crime drama at first, like a slow burn, but the tension and dread build up very quickly. Actors Ben Mendelsohn, Cynthia Erivo, Patty Considine, and Jason Bateman light up the screen in this series. And if you're a Stephen King fan who's hungry for detective shows, you should check out Mr. Mercedes. It tells the story of a broken-down retired detective played by Brendan Gleeson, who's on the hunt for a psychopathic killer. Out of all the series we've just discussed, which do you feel most closely resembles Stranger Things? And which series do you think you'd enjoy the most? Drop a comment down below. We'd love to know your thoughts. That's a wrap for today's video. Thank you for watching.